What the f All right, new arrival alert. This just got dropped off. Didn't film it coming off the truck because, you know, you guys have seen it a million times before and I didn't want to be annoying to the transporter with a camera up in his face. But just had this dropped off literally five minutes ago. I took a real quick look at it. I had to sit in it so I could brake while it rolled off the truck. You can see by the big N there on the windshield, this is an in-op, did not start. Did give them an odometer reading. And I saw that in the pictures, obviously. This was, I mean, you guys know me. If you follow my channel, this is what I do, right? I collect these front wheel drive, 80s, 90s, GM oddball cars. It's always been my thing. So when one comes along, uh, I pretty much always have to save them because unfortunately, these cars are not super appreciated. I mean, people are, people like, people have always liked them. And now they're becoming more appreciated and collectible, but still not nearly as much as, say, a Cadillac Brome or a Caprice rear-wheel drive stuff. So I usually have to be the one to step in and save these cars, otherwise end up at the junkyard. And that's a shame, especially one like this. This was sight unseen. Uh, this is a flood car from Ian, although I really don't see yet anyway. Not to say it wasn't, but I don't see where the flood happened because... When I got in this thing to help get it off the truck, no odor, everything seems good. I can't find a water line for my quick look. You can see there's just nothing. Usually it'll have a little bit of debris. It left like a filmy line. I don't see anything. So this car is far from perfect, but actually it's a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be. And I got this pretty cheap $350 winning bid with fees and shipping, because I just didn't have time to go pick this thing up. It's three hours away of the co-part it came from. Fees, I'm into it for five, like 40 or 560 it was out the door. And then another 180 to ship it. So I'm into it for like 700 bucks. And I gotta say, now that I'm seeing it, I'm very content with that. These Rivieras, this is of the front wheel drive bodies this body is actually pretty popular and these do bring a fair amount of money now i have a white 89 that i've had for years also was a copart buy was cheaper than this and it wasn't flood and it had less miles than this and it's nicer than this but again that's a different time a different era that no longer exists the value of all cars went up with everything that happened with covid and car prices in general and especially stuff like this is coming into collectability now so i just don't see prices ever being that cheap on stuff like this again but hey i'm still content for like six years later prices have gone up everything else this is still a low mileage relatively good condition riviera that i got for like 700 bucks delivered to my door and again, I knew that if I didn't buy this thing at the $350 bid I got it for, it was probably going to the junkyard. And I don't think this car is quite ready for that yet. Now, I will say the paint I was hoping is going to be a little bit better. I think it's definitely still salvageable. It's got a little bit of haziness on the hood, but I've polished out hoods that are much worse than that, and they've come right back to their... Uh, original glossy shine so I think it's definitely still salvageable I don't think it's gonna need to be repainted you look down the sides of the car and the paint is very good but the whole car could use a polishing the quarter top back here I saw this in the pictures after I won it I mean I wouldn't have not bought it because of this but you can see that the quarter top is a little uh, and I want to say it's peeling, but something happened over here where it's got a little bit of a gap. It's still very much presentable, and this could be re-dyed, bring back its color. The material is in good shape, which is the important thing. So, definitely not too, too bad. I didn't even realize this was a sunroof car, which I'm really excited about, because my 89 is not a sunroof car. 
and I always thought it'd be cool to have a sunroof in my 89. So very excited about that. Again, pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting the headliner. Again, I thought this headliner was going to be bad. The pictures, I couldn't really tell. Headliner's definitely been redone. It's in excellent shape. Um, the driver's seat bottom, couldn't tell. In the, oh, it is torn. Okay, never mind. Well, it needs new seats, which... I'm sure I can find a set of seats out of a Northeast car. It's in the junkyard. It's all rotted out. So I'm not horribly concerned about that. You can see the passenger seats really roached. Maybe the sunroof was leaking before onto the seat. But the rear seats at least appear to be, yeah, these are in good shape. They're not terribly dried out or anything like that, even on the top. I mean, look at the carpet, everything else. Granted, it needs to be vacuumed, but everything else is in really good shape. A little bit of cracking here on this plastic. I think even my white one, which is in really nice shape, is cracked there. That's not that big of a deal. I can, again, get one out of a Northeast junkyard car. Steering wheel just slightly starting to dry out. That could even just be some dirt. But in pretty good shape. Everything else in terms of the dashboard in pretty good shape. It's got this awful aftermarket radio um, set up, and of course the faceplate's missing. My guess would be that the uh, person who owned this car took it out when I got totaled. Hey, they left me some water. Went to Arby's and asked for a free cup of water. I don't think, again, this napkin's dry. I, I haven't found any evidence of flooding yet. I even looked underneath the seats at least looked underneath the passenger seat and I didn't see any rust on the seat tracks, the bolts, the motors. Not to say it couldn't have been flooded, but so far it's looking really good. Obviously the true test will be later on. I'll just pull the carpet up a bit and see if anything feels wet underneath it, but everything else seems really good. Again, door panel in nice shape. So these cars are getting harder and harder to find and you can't be super picky unless you want to spend all the money on one, which, you know, I get, I'm get i a cheap frills kind of guy. This car is going to polish up really nice. It only needs a few small things cosmetically. I mean, these mud flaps, you can see they dried out from Florida, but I could either just take those off, or I'm sure I can find a set on eBay. But yeah, 96,000 mile car, if I haven't said it. It's, again, an in-op. The battery is obviously stone cold dead. You can see the key there in the on position and the ignition. And it is a GM key, but it appears to be missing the, uh, the circle key for the doors, which that's not too good, uh, especially because I wanted to pop the trunk open and see if there was any water in there. And more importantly, I wanted to see if the wheel hubcaps were in the trunk. Now, if I had to guess, I bet the person who owned this took them off before insurance came and got it, which kind of sucks, but again... Uh, any wire Buick hubcaps that will fit these wheels will do. I think these are 15 inch wheels on this car. Yeah, 15. The tires, they've got good tread, a little bit of dry rot, but not horribly dry rotted. So they're definitely good for now, which is nice. I don't have to replace them right away. It's kind of hoping it had a new set of tires, but uh, based on the condition of the rest of the car, I wasn't expecting it. Now, it looks really clean underneath. That's why I almost wonder, well, where the heck, you know, I don't see any surface rust or anything starting, which normally you would, as you've seen from some of my other videos on a flood car. This thing has all brand new brake lines we're gonna look at in a minute. And someone will correct me on this and that's perfectly okay. Uh, I know the earlier Rivieras of this body, like my 89 had the Bosch ABS that was problematic. I feel like 90 did as well, which is what this car is, but you got to open these hoods right from the middle because the hinges have to be opened like perfectly straight or else when you go to shut the hood, the hood will shut kind of crooked. So the hood struts are really bad. I'm going to have to hold this hood up. I don't know if that got hot and burned on top of the engine or if a mouse got to it. It looks more like it got hot, uh, which hopefully the engine didn't get too hot. All right, the AC. Looks like it has been converted. That's a new dryer. But this is what I saw on the service history. New master cylinder and brake lines. The entire vehicle was on the Carfax record. So I wonder if this had the Bosch ABS 
and the pump went bad and somebody went through the trouble of converting it to just standard brakes. If that's the case, that's great for me. Or maybe this car just didn't have the Bosch ABS, but I don't see why it wouldn't in 90. I think it was 91 they did away with that or it was an improved system. But nothing looks, again, you look, I just don't see any evidence of water whatsoever. I see cobwebs everywhere. I'm hoping this was a case of someone just taking advantage of the situation and grabbing a check and this thing didn't actually see water. It'd be nice if I didn't have to pull another interior out of a car. And again, it was a non-run, but you could tell in the Copart pictures that this thing just barely had any juice. This battery doesn't look too new. I'll have to check the sticker on the back. I can't do it while holding my camera, but I'm hoping that the battery is just really dead. It's hard to get a good connection on these side post batteries. I've had that happen with several cars from Copart. Hell, more than several. Like the Yukon, a lot of the flood cars, the Rendezvous, they were all non-runners. I just swapped the battery and they all started right up. A booster, they were too dead for a booster pack, at least, you know, putting it on those little puny connectors on the side. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. But I got to be quick here, and we'll look at this more later. But I got to go pick up another car, and I also have to, looks like they put either like a moisture blocking goo on the ignition module. The ignition module is just shot which is very common in these, and that might be the reason it doesn't start. Maybe it cranked and it didn't start for Copart. That could be the reason. All right, here's the oil. And you can hopefully see that the oil looks very good. It's right where it should be on the dipstick. And the, oil, the color looks good. This had pretty good service history. And again, it's been on the road recently enough. I think maybe 2020, I think maybe 21 was the last service record I saw. So it's not like it's been sitting for a long, long time. Transmission fluid, it's older fluid, but clearly no water in there. So also good to see. They have the water line on this. I'm not sure if I showed it. I think it's on the passenger side. I'll show it quickly. They have it marked very low. And I think um, at least based on what they were looking at, I think they were pretty accurate in that uh coolant reservoir is full i'll check it here at the oh yeah nice green coolant already came shooting out and it's definitely full so that's great to see uh looks like it has a newer egr valve and again the ac the plug wires look newer i can't tell if that compressor is a replacement or not but it, it looks like it is but it was definitely done some time ago show it's, it's pretty dirty but looks so like the water pump's definitely been done too all typical things in these cars it's all minor maintenance these things need so here's the water line that they marked i don't i think they just kind of said all right screw it we'll put it here because i don't see any evidence i don't see like a fine film line or anything like that maybe when it came in there was one and the rains washed it away but i don't see one so again same tires all around really clean underneath now i do see that this fuse box panel is open i don't know if who was checking for flood damage this is what i was saying look at how clean it is underneath this driver's seat you get weird rust like that on florida cars from the humidity and the salt air but hardly otherwise is there any rust or i mean the slightest bit which always happens in that untreated metal again from the humidity i, I just don't see enough evidence there's no odor to this thing whatsoever it just smells like a dingy old car zero flood odor i don't see any evidence of any water up in there in the glove box when i get home tonight i'll throw power on this thing and see what happens okay so it's been almost a week since i had this riviera dropped off from copart from the flood lot as you saw in the previous clip I haven't touched it since. I moved it forward a little bit, just pushed it forward. I uh, had it too close to the gate to really get in and out with my trailer, but that's it. I haven't tried to put power to it or anything, and that's gonna change right now. I've got my booster pack. I have a feeling it's gonna be a case of a really dead battery, and I've got another battery charged up, ready to go. So 
I will try this battery first though, which it seems like Copart did as well, because they had some power. In the pictures, it appeared that the dash was partially lit up. I'm hoping that it was partially lit up because it just had the battery was really weak and not because the dash is bad. It's most likely the latter, but we'll see. Let me prop this and we'll uh, throw some power on her. Okay, I found me a hoe <laughs> to hold up the hood. Got the booster pack hooked up. Let me make sure I got some juice in this thing. Beautiful, fully charged. Here we go, let's see what happens. Ooh. Blower motor just kicked on. Okay, the key is in it. I grabbed the whole, I got so many keys of this era, GM keys, I grabbed a whole bunch thinking that, uh, thinking that I didn't have them in the car still. Hey! That's some power seat functionality, although the primary functions are in the door. If that will go back and forth. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. I gotta wonder if this was even flooded because especially the age of these power seat motors and if they were in salt water for them to still work, doubtful. And the dash does appear, you can see that the brightness is all the way up on the panel light switch and it's not very bright, but I can see everything. 96,000 miles as they had put on the uh, window here. So it's good to see that that was legitimate because it was hard to tell in the pictures. Let's see if anything happens here. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. They had this listed as a... Uh, as a non-runner. Look, N, non-runner. <laughs> what? It fired right up. It fired right up. Are you serious? And the brake light, the e-brake was on? You've gotta be kidding me. I did not expect this to be that easy. <laughs> what? I thought I was gonna have to do all kinds of crap to get this thing to run. It fired right up. Important window works, as Randy would say. That one sounds a little iffy, but it worked. It, it may seem bold of me to do this, but no trouble at all. Look at her. Uh oh. Okay. Ah! Mm. Okay, we're, we're not gonna touch that. You have got to be kidding me. This thing's been sitting here for a week. I haven't even given it the time of day. And look at her, she's ready to prove to me that she's worth saving. Fired right up. Because there was a possibility, I always say this, my friends like Anthony are gonna hear me say this and laugh. I bought this as a potential parts car because it didn't look to be in perfect condition and I figured that was just the excuse I gave myself to buy it. And uh, obviously, it's not going to be a parts car. Look at it, it just wants to live. It fired right up. See a little bit of smoke come off the engine as I rev it up. Maybe it's got a little manifold leak. Yeah, it's got a little bit of an exhaust leak at the back here. I can hear it. So that's that's not a big deal though. The engine seems to run great. We'll have to see if it has any of the, the big three issues that these older 3800s always have. And I figured that maybe one of those was present and that's why they had it as a non-run. Ignition module, cam magnet position sensor, or crankshaft sensor, those three will go bad on these cars. It'll either be stalling out when driving or it just won't start at all. And so we'll see if it stalls out when it gets up to warm idle, then we know it needs one of them. Oh, it runs perfect. There's no misfire. This is unbelievable. We're gonna take this thing for a drive in a minute. Now let's see if it goes into gear. I'm sure it will. Boom, right into gear. Door jar light comes on. instantly no hesitation no slamming into gear and the dash is working it's just very dim 
So it probably needs to be rebuilt, something in the cluster that's making it dim, or it could be a bad panel switch here. I've seen that be the case where the panel won't even come on or it'll just be dim like this. That could be the case. Let me see what happens when I put the lights on. It says lights on. So again, we're getting feedback from the cluster. It's just, it's not lighting up. At night, it's probably fairly visible, but I will fix it obviously. Wouldn't be the first time I've had to send one of these out. You've got the test function here. It shows you that all your warning lights are working to make sure that they're gonna work when you need them. Let's see if the, now this came on. Let's see if this thing is AC. I doubt it in the condition it's in. Oh, hello. We're not gonna come back on now? Okay, here we go. Let's turn the temperature down. Oh, service engine soon light came on as soon as I hit climate. It's not being very responsive. See? So something's back off. I mean, the service engine suit light in an OBD1 car like this basically means nothing. It doesn't concern me too much. These cars will always throw them at random. See, and it'll come on, off. I wonder, I already checked all this out, so I don't think he left the faceplate for that radio. Nope. Let's see what's in the trunk. Did I ever check this trunk? I don't think that I did, because I don't remember seeing all this stuff in here. A little marine battery or like a lawnmower battery in here. It's a nice little bonus, 2019 battery. I'm sure that's uh, probably still good. Now, we're questioning obviously this thing was flooded and I'm surprised I didn't check this when it came in the other day. I guess I was just, uh, I think I was in a hurry if I remember correctly. Let's see if we have any water in the spare tube. I don't know what that was. I thought that was a cockroach jumping out at me. Oh, there is a little bit of water on that. This is damp. But could the water really have been that high? And you can see nothing's rusty. That might just be, that could just be a humid, like a trunk, like a weather stripping leak. There's a little bit of mold on that sticker, but huh, interesting. That would be pretty deep. Definitely deeper than the water line if that was actually flooded. I'll have to pull the carpet up in a minute and see, but I'd be surprised if the water was that high, it should have affected our power seat motors. We should be seeing more evidence. I can't get over how nice this thing runs. Well, actually you see the water line they put that would line up with the trunk having a little bit of water, but it's just damp. There's no standing water in the trunk, just damp. And I, I certainly have seen that in old cars, just moisture or rain somehow gets in the trunk. This is all dry. So if water did get in, it must've came up through the uh, plugs in the floor there, which are pretty well sealed. I'd be surprised if it could. We'll answer that question for sure when I pull the carpet. All right, beautiful, this one works too. Right, well, let me throw that stuff in the trunk. Let's go for a drive. Okay, so I haven't gone for the actual drive yet. I just moved it from over there into my driveway because that battery seemed really weak still, even with the booster pack on it. I pressed the horn before I went to drive it and, and all the lights flickered. Sure enough, as soon as I took that, as soon as I shut the car off when I pulled it here, car wouldn't start, wouldn't even click. Battery is totally dead. I'm gonna try to deep cycle it, but I put in a good battery just now and look at how much brighter the mileage lights up. I think that battery was just so weak that it didn't have enough juice to really power everything to its full potential. So let's see if the cluster is bright like it should be. Well, this battery, I guess, isn't very good either. All right, we got our odometer back. I've got my booster pack on this battery. Let's see, an improvement. Uh, we're still kind of dim. I mean, it may look brighter, but that's because, oh, wait a minute. No, there we go. Just faulty switch, I think. Like I kind of thought. Seems like a switch issue, because as I mess with it, all right, the horn's better this time. Got any major draw? Let's see. Oh, it's only 111 degrees out. 
perfect. Seems better than the last battery. I got all these lights coming on. I think that'll be good enough for now. Let's see if I can operate the climate. Cause that wasn't really working before. Oh, the AC just came on. I just heard a click. But why is the, okay, there we go. It's just sticky buttons. I think the AC works in this. That would be an incredible bonus. I'll be damned. <laughs> the AC works. Try it. Looks like an older compressor. I don't know about original. That clutch looks way too shiny. Oh, that AC is cold. You have got to be kidding me. It's even got cold air. Holy crap. Okay, let me unhook that. Close the hood. We'll go for the first drive. Here we go. First drive. Let's see if it shifts. First to second, no trouble there. Look how beautiful that dash is. Second to third, no trouble there. My other Riviera has the other digital dash. It's not as big as this one, but it has the touch screen. It's called a VIC. It's like a CR, it's a CRT monitor, visual information center. So it's a little cooler in that sense. Oh yeah, she goes perfectly fine. Let me shut this just to alleviate some of the wind noise. And you can see it does shut. Oh, that's right, it stops in two positions. That always freaks me out. <laughs> I did not expect this at all. Don't worry about the service engine soon. Like these cars just throw them on and off, on and off. It's always something dumb. They'll probably turn back off before I get home. I can figure out what the check engine light's on for. I just need to get a paper clip. I'm sure most of you know that trick. There's two pins on the connector down here. It looks kind of like an OBD2 connector. It's not. This thing drives beautifully. Very smooth and soft as a Riviera should. The suspension feels good. Brakes, excellent. Excellent brakes. Definitely nice. And that was really what attracted me to this car was that I didn't have to worry about the Teves ABS system. I saw it on the car fact. Let's get on her a little bit. Check engine light turned off. I guess it likes that. Beautiful. Very smooth through acceleration. She's boaty, like these cars are supposed to be. I do notice that the oil pressure gauge is kind of jumping around there. I haven't seen it jump down to the red. We would get a uh, check gauges warning. Could be that, yeah, you see it there. It's probably a faulty oil pressure sensor. Oh, you can see the odometer does work. I believe it was 96. 40 something and now we're at 52 cluster again lighting up just fine and i bet you if i replace that switch it will be less temperamental it should be as bright as this here it's just stuck at a lower adjustment but you saw me earlier as i messed with the switch it was making it brighter ac is still nice and cold i need a factory radio for this i may have one I've got a lot of old GM radios because I hate aftermarket radios. I want a period correct radio in here. If it was an aftermarket period correct radio, uh, maybe I'd let it slide, but I don't want a modern faceplate radio like that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing home. I wanna wash it. I also wanna pull back the carpet and see if I find any evidence of flooding there. Um, but if I do, it's not the end of the world. Power seats work. The interior is fairly straightforward to pull out. Just have to remove the two seats and the carpet. I could do it probably in 10 minutes. We'll see what we find. Okay, so you can see, and I'll show you even better in a minute here, just how nice this Riviera cleaned up. Now, granted, it's still wet. The paint is not perfect on this. I really pressure washed the heck out of it. And you can see on the hood, see all those dark spots? Those are like sap spots that are through the paint they etched in. I think with a real good wool pad and a good compounding that should all clean up. Generally speaking, if you wet a car down like this and the paint looks brand new, then usually you can polish it out and get it back to that point. If you wet a car and it still doesn't look good, then usually the paint's beyond saving. And so I pulled the carpet, granted not completely, uh, because it is the evening and I don't want to get into pulling the whole interior tonight, but I pulled both the driver's and passenger front carpet, pulled it up just enough that I can reach in and feel around. I'm getting mixed signals here because 
the driver's side, dry as a bone. This is completely dry. You can see the floor is dry. It's clean. There's no corrosion. I even pull up this here. Completely dry underneath. I reach all the way in this way. The pedals are getting in my way from pulling this carpet up all the way, but I'm completely, you can see my hand, this is completely dry over here. Completely dry, no odor, no residue. I popped open this cover here for the wiring harness. You can see it's dingy, it's dusty, that's good. There's no debris, there's no water spots or staining. Here we are on the passenger side, and it's a different story. You can see the floor is wet. Underneath here is wet. This is damp. It's not soaked, it's damp. So could that be that the sunroof drains are clogged? I'll blow those out. Nothing else, just as a precaution. It could be that, or it could be that for whatever reason, the driver's side is dry and the passenger side is wet from the flood. Really, I need to pull on both sides your, the rear trim lift the carpet up and see what it's like back there. And you see, I pulled this here, and this is, again, clearly untouched by water. There's actually even cobwebs in there. So for this to be wet and this not to be wet, it makes me think it's a sunroof thing. I had this issue actually with this Trofeo right here. It's same chassis car, and this sunroof, the drains were clogged and they were just dumping water into the front carpets and it was even, and it was making its way back to the rear carpet. So it's very possible because that side's completely dry and this side's damp, that this drain is clogged and that drain is not. Okay, so check this out. I moved the passenger seat forward and I noticed right away, kind of some weird staining here on the carpet that to me screams, flood you can see the corrosion kind of a weird water line maybe there was a floor mat here that someone took out and that's why you don't ha you have it's that sharp line right there and so i popped out this rear trim here just enough to reach underneath the carpet and you've got some carpet padding here and it's soaked now could that still be sunroof related it could be but i doubt i pulled the driver's rear carpet and padding and even though the front was dry this is soaked back here even worse than the uh passenger side rear i mean absolutely drenched it smells like seawater you can see the Moisture goes all the way up to the top, but it doesn't mean the water was all the way up there because obviously with a material like this, when it gets wet, the water travels up it. Maybe that's our water line right there. You know, I love and hate just the same when a car doesn't give me a definite water line. Okay, and here she is. As I've said, not a perfect car. Definitely not horrible either. A real good buff and cut on this thing will really help bring that paint back all i did tonight was pressure wash it it does look a lot better i'm not sure if it's specialty motor cars league better definitely better than when she came in you can see the shine on that chrome for example the sides of the car beautiful they really don't need too much polishing it's really just the upper surfaces that you as you would expect that the harsh Florida sun has faded a bit. You can see what the paint will look like where it's still wet and what it looks like currently where it's dry. I think she's gonna clean up great. I'm looking very forward to doing that detail on her. Obviously what's more important at this point is pulling out the carpet, getting all that clean, which I'll do this week. You can see the top cleaned up as well. There was a lot of sap on it it could use a re-dyeing if that can be done in a top like this. I never have to fix these. I always buy cars that have tops in good shape. Comment Gazo Refresh if you want Anthony to fly down to Florida and re-dye this top, if that can be done. I just can't wait to see how this thing cleans up. Maybe Anthony should come down and buff the whole car. He really has the magic touch in making these cars look brand new. Definitely want to fix that exhaust leak sooner than later. You can see I vacuumed the interior quick. Again, obviously the carpet's coming out this week, so I didn't go too crazy. Would love to replace these seats. 
You can see she's still running great. No check engine light, at least at the moment. AC, nice and cold. Need that factory radio. I know I keep repeating the same talking points, but for emphasis, love the way the doors close on these cars. Trofeos, the Rivieras, these are such well-built cars. There's unbeatable 3800 powertrain. You can hear her purring like a kitten. So anyways, we'll close out the video here. I think you've seen enough of the car. I think you can see all the potential she has. I'm so glad I was able to save this car. At how low of a bid I got it for, I can almost guarantee you, as I've said, if I didn't buy it, it probably would have been the junkyard. And this car definitely was not ready for the junkyard. With that said, thanks for watching, guys. Keep an eye out. Like I said, in the future, I've got to get these parts together. If you've got a lead on any of the parts that I've mentioned several times, let me know. Obviously, it's got to be cheap because you know me. I'm cheap. The car is 350 bucks. I'm not going to pay 350 bucks for seats. I'd rather drive around with these seats the way they are. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep an eye out for the next one. And plenty more flood car videos coming soon.